What's going on guys? Welcome back to Texas Young Guns. In this video, we're going to do something a little different. Uh, in these types of videos, we'll probably release them in the middle of the week. Uh, maybe not on a set schedule at first, but maybe later on if it ends up being something you guys like. But what I'd like to do, or what we, we would like to do, is tackle issues common in the RV world. Uh, so we're, I would say, compared to others, still new, because we're mm -hmm. what, less than a year in it now? Less than a year. Less than a year. Second rig. Yeah, already on our second rig. Yeah, not by choice. Yep. So we figured we would tackle some of the main issues first that you have to deal with when you're getting your first rig. Mm -hmm. So in that regard, in this video, let's talk about your thoughts and my thoughts on what type of RV, now that we have a little experience, mm -hmm. that we should get. So let's let's. Let's line out the types first, right? So you got your your small ones. Let's say your class, I think they're class Bs, like they're Mercedes, mm. the Mercedes styles, like the vans. Yeah. Okay. So. Are those class like Bs? The ones with like truck chassis and. Uh no, this would be like uh like that Mercedes Airstream partnership oh, where it okay. was like a van, you know. Yeah. Okay. So like vans. Yeah, okay. van basically, and then you have your uh, let's say your class Cs. These are all drivables, by the way. Uh, first, so like your class C's, so that would be like your truck chassis. Uh, basically, they'd get it from Ford or Chevy or whoever, and then, okay. and then uh, you have your your class B, someone that kind of has the weird uh, eighteen wheeler nose on it, but then has also has the you know like the the big Freightliner mm -hmm. eighteen wheeler looking mm -hmm. ones, um, and then of course you have your class A's, which would be your bigger. Uh, gas or diesel ones you know that are made to be an rv from the start not mm -hmm. not like a truck chassis right. uh, and then of course you have your your trailers right your bumper pulls mm -hmm. your your little uh what do they call them the little egg looking deals um like, like your teardrops yeah like the ones that jeeps are pulling sometimes you know in the wilderness mm -hmm. uh and then of course all the way up to like your goosenecks and your fifth wheels and stuff right so let's break it down first so trailer versus drivable who do you think a trailer's for? That's hard. Um, I think a trailer could be for anybody, really. I think it's more or less your personal preferences to you, how you are, like, what's your comfort, you know? Um, mm. What are you most comfortable driving in? What are you going to be using it for? I think all of that plays a factor as to who it's really for. But I think it could be for anybody, really. It's just... Right, and as we've been learning, uh, we found out recently, if you remember, there's actually multiple types of trailers, right? So mm -hmm. you got your, uh, what they call destination trailers. Right. Uh, which means it doesn't have all the hookups that like a normal travel trailer would have. So like when you hook up your sewer and stuff, it's more permanent, or at least you're not doing it very often. And then you have your normal uh, like bumper pull trailer, that'd be like your Jayco's and stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, I think those are probably more for beginners, like the smaller trailers or the people that might go somewhere. Would you agree, go somewhere for like a week and stay and then come back home? Yeah. You know, those people that don't want to do, for instance, our long trips are like we go to a destination, stop, or maybe overnight, keep driving. Um, so yeah, I would say that those types of rigs are for people who are like, you know, going to the beach and they're staying there for a week or they're going mm. to Garner State Park and they're staying there for a week. You know, you're going to a destination to stay long term. Yeah, I think the pluses too of a trailer versus a drivable are just the fact that uh, once you are at your destination, you can kind of unhook mm -hmm. and that is your travel vehicle, right? Yeah. So you do have to have the right vehicle, though, too. You have to think about that. If you want, you know, just a basic, you know, everyday bumper pull, you know, you don't need a massive truck. But if mm. you're going to go with one of those huge, like, open ranges or something, the huge fifth the wheels. The fifth wheels, yep. I mean, you're going to need a truck that has the horsepower to pull it, you know. Yep, and the suspension, obviously, mm -hmm. yep. So there's that's something there. Of course, motorhomes are so expensive. So, yeah. so it's a it's a consideration of do I have a pool vehicle if I'm going to be doing a drivable right? Mm -hmm. uh, so the cost of a pool vehicle and the motorhome, and we mm -hmm. know motorhomes are not cheap no. to begin with compared to trailers. Like, I would say an entry level motorhome, you're going to be spending at least seventy or eighty. That sounds about right to you. Yeah. At the low end, and then 
ish. New, new, new. Yeah, Vers- we, you could take the route that we do and get something a little bit older. Right. And, but if you want something, I mean, a new motorhome and a new trailer is not going to be in the same ballpark. Yeah, and I think something like new versus used would be something that would be a good topic for us to cover mm-hmm. later. Yeah. Because there's a lot into that in on its own. But for today, just the assumption, let's say everything's new, right? Like a lot of people have come to us since we are younger. We don't have children. You know, a lot of people, their question is, why? Why did you, you pick a motorhome? Because we, I mean, you do have a truck. You know, mm-hmm. it would have probably made more logical sense for us to get a fifth wheel or a bumper pull of some sort. So a lot of people do come to the have the question for us, why? Why did you pick a motorhome? Well, it's, it's interesting that you say that. So let's hit on why we went with a motorhome rather than a trailer. Oh, okay. So... I mean, that's a no-brainer for me. Oh, uh, well, then go ahead. <laughs> um, so... I personally suffer from being car sick. Um, it's something that I've had since I was younger. And the doctor just kind of told me, oh, you know, she'll outgrow it. I'll get to get car sick. And it may be true, but um, I did have hearing loss as a child and I'm half deaf. So they do, you know, I think my well, equilibrium. Well, full deaf, depending on how much yeah. you want to listen to me. But um, I think, <laughs> you know, with uh, the... My illness that I had as a kid did affect me being having being car sick. The all, literally, I can be in a car just driving from here to, you know, thirty minutes down the road, and I can get car can get car sick. And it's like I want to chunk it car sick. And so I don't think I would have ever been completely comfortable in confined into a truck. You know, if I'm in a motorhome, one, I'm in the front seat. And two, if I get sick, I can just go lay down. Because if I can fall asleep, then that typically, I can get over my car sickness quicker. Yeah, I think that's one of the big pluses about the motorhome, too, is there's no, uh, you know, getting out of the separation of your pool vehicle and your Mm -hmm. trailer, right? So you have the convenience of one, uh, everything being in one unit, I guess, so to speak, uh, the transition from driving to mm-hmm. just being in your RV already. And yeah. then the convenience of, like, for us, we don't require, uh, like, high-end restaurants or fancy food for every meal. So when we're traveling, we're only doing peanut butter sandwiches or yeah, ham well, sandwiches. Yeah. I mean, I can go literally make him a sandwich while he's driving down the road, and he'll, he can be eating it. I don't recommend you eat while you drive, but sometimes <laughs> you do it. We do stop. Um, we can also, you know, uh, if we're driving early in the morning i can go make some coffee while we're going down the road you know it's just the ease of having everything right there um you know if you have to go to the bathroom you don't have to make a stop you just walk to the bathroom so I like, once again we do stop <laughs> yeah we we do stop but it cuts down on your stops and i think just the ease of having everything right there for you so let's act like we have a a bumper pull right so it, in order to do any of that, let's say you're on a long trip, you're ready to eat some lunch, uh, you're going to have to pull over, crank up the generator, hook, yeah. hook it up, which is going to be difficult because the electrical is probably in the back, and you have to do all of that, uh, where, especially if you're in a hot environment because uh, you're going to mm-hmm. want the AC and stuff and maybe a microwave. Uh, whereas in a motorhome, for us, it's just a matter of simply just pulling over, right? Because... The generator's on board. It might already be running depending on how hot it is because we might be running the ACs. Mm-hmm. And it's just like a home at that point. You just walk to the back and you're ready to go. Yeah, you're set. But yeah. I think that all goes back to what we just talked about, how if you're a destination traveler, then you really don't have that need to pull over and eat because you're going to eat when you get to where you're going. Yeah, so like if you're a destination traveler, like let's say your only trips are going to be uh, to a beach that's four hours away or even a beach that's one or two day full drive your yeah. goal is to grab quick meals or even fancy restaurants if that's your thing but then you're going to be there you know whereas us so far most of the trips that we're doing we're, we're moving we're on the move yeah we're so. trying to see as you know we're not retired so we're trying to mm. fit as much in as our work schedules allow so. yeah now one of the big pluses though of trailers is i believe you have uh, more access to locations yeah. with your RV, whereas uh, like some of the passes that we're wanting to do in Yellowstone and stuff, mm-hmm. I don't think our RV is going to fit. And in fact, if you watch other RVers' videos, we know it won't fit, right? Mm-hmm. So you'd have to unhook, 
yeah. do the whole tow car thing, and that's kind of painful. You're having to backtrack to wherever you've parked your RV. That maybe that's lost time, maybe it isn't. Mm-hmm. So you know there are those kind of hassles too. I think too. there's pluses and minuses to no matter what option you choose, mm-hmm. whether it be you know pool rigs or fifth wheels or motorhomes. And you you even you even see that we see that a lot in following the YouTubers we follow and just the people that we've met. You know, people have went from fifth wheels to motorhomes, and they've went from motorhomes to fifth wheels to trailers. I mean, it's just it's kind of what you want to do with your rig at that time. But I will say that we didn't just go out and wake up and go, hmm, we're going to buy a motorhome. That's right. We did the smart thing and tried it out. We did. So in 2014, um, my family decided we were going to go to Disney World. (laughs) And so we um, actually decided we were going to drive it. We all wanted to ride together. We didn't want to fly, all that kind of stuff, because my nephews were young at that point. Um, so we rented a motorhome and we drove it. Yep. And we didn't stay in it. We literally just got the motorhome for travel. Yep. Yep. Did not even stay in no, it. No, we, we basically stayed in the park. We basically used it as a big van because we mm-hmm. had close to 10 people and legally that was the only vehicle that we could transport everybody in. Yeah. And it was, yep. it, and there was... Lots of gentlemen on the trip. So they all kind of... Switched off. Switched off. So we drove it straight through from Texas to... No, I would say that we weren't really looking for RVs at that point. But what that did teach us is that we did want a motorhome. Yeah, well... Uh, More importantly, it taught us that we did not want a Class C if we were ever to get one. It it sparked our interest because it was... was we were comfortable, you know, we right. could, we could go sleep and then someone else could drive and we had food, we had snacks, especially with my young nephews, you know, if they got hungry and a snack it was in the fridge, it was right there, you know, so the ease of traveling really, that trip I think kind of drew us to, we, we, this could be something we're interested in. Yep. Yep. And I think there, we could probably make this, uh, hours long cause there's so many different aspects, but Let's let's tackle the elephant in the room real quick. So, as far as motorhomes go, if you've never driven a vehicle of that size, (laughs) it can be quite intimidating. Now, I'll give you a little bit of my background. I went to Texas A&M University, uh, and I had to work while I was there. And my main job while I was there was I was a bus driver. So, I'd already done it for four years, basically. So when I jumped into the motorhome, it was pretty much just second nature to me. That being said, they're not they're not as intimidating as it seems. They're very easy to drive. No. <laughs> no, for, they are not. For most. <laughs> they are not. They are intimidating. Um, I think it's something, but, okay, so they are intimidating. Don't let them fool you. They're massive. Um, the turn radius is different, but at the same time, I think even someone who, uh, drove a smart car their entire life, you know, a little smart car, a little and box. Then you made them drive like an F-250 or an F-350, that would seem intimidating to them. That's very true. So I think just getting, o- like getting over your fear and just doing it. With yeah. that being said, I've yet to conquer that fear. I, he literally <laughs> made me drive on the road for like 10 minutes. And I thought I was going to die of anxiety. <laughs> yeah, if you're used to driving around a pickup truck already, hauling a trailer, uh, granted, these RV trailers, uh, depending on what you get, could be bigger than what you're used to. Uh, it's the same kind of a deal. So that might be something you just slip into uh, because of that fact. Well, I, I don't think it's just the size because I think you can get over the size pretty quickly. Um, I think it's everything else, like the, the brake system. And making sure that, you know, you've pressed all the right buttons. Because, like, to someone who hasn't driven something with, like, air air suspension, I don't even know the right terminology for it. All that kind of stuff, it's intimidating. To me, the first time I had to sit in the driver's seat, it was probably equipped, like, in my mind, is equivalent to what an airline pilot does. (laughs) Seriously, there are buttons everywhere. And I don't know what they all mean. I don't know what they all do. It don't it is intimidating, but I think it's something that you can get over. Um, I definitely would not recommend that someone just go to 
you know, Camping World, buy an RV and drive it. Like you need to take a class. You need to know what the buttons are just to protect yourself and other people out on the road and your rig. Because you can do yep. some damage if you don't know how to drive it. That's right. I think we brought up several points. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, you could talk about this for hours. So this might be a topic we revisit in the future. But I think the takeaway is, and I think you'd agree with this, if you're wanting to get into RVing, whether it's a trailer or drivable or whatever, a good idea is to take the time to try it first if you have that ability yeah. to make sure that is... You can rent them. Yeah, you can rent them. And, and honestly, mm-hmm. trailers are not that expensive to rent. Uh, class C's are not that expensive to rent. Now, Class A's might be a little bit more difficult. Mm-hmm. Uh, you don't see those no. rentable that often. I'm not saying that doesn't exist. It'd be a little tougher. Uh, and I'm sure your buddy down the road, you'd have to have a pretty good buddy let you borrow their Class A just because of the danger there. But... Uh, you know, the, the whole point is, is if you have the ability, try it first. Don't get it set in your head uh, that I think a lot of people do that you're going to be set on one way yeah. only. Try it out and see if you like it. Yeah, I would say try it out and piggybacking off that idea. If you don't know anyone that has a class A, um, we even did this. Not only did we rent one, but then like several years down the road after his parents bought one, we, we stayed with them for the weekend. Remember? Yep. We stayed the weekend to just see like the functionality of it and if it's something we really would want to yep. do. By that point, we pretty much knew we wanted a class A. Mm-hmm. but And it was hard because we were very excited, if you remember. But we did the responsible thing and actually stayed with my parents who already had one and made sure that an investment on a class a was what we wanted to do and it it confirmed that it was Mm -hmm. and here we are today so i would say definitely um you know don't stay in one narrow-minded road as to what you want to do like you said the second thing is i would say you need to sit down with your family your spouse whatever and think about what's your goal you know Mm -hmm. is your goal to go to the river for the week and stay in it is your goal to travel cross country what is your goal that that's going to help you think about what you want as well yep and your closest friends and family will not be able to help you on this because Mm -hmm. this decision is for you yeah i mean our family and friends thought we were crazy they still think we're crazy yep and we love it so (laughs) here we are (laughs) yeah um third is probably budget Yes, budget. And I mean, you hate to not mention budget. Yeah. But you have to, um, I mean, good Lord, we would like to buy the, you know, the Integras and the the big named Class A's. That's not us. I'm, I'm a teacher. You know, he's a worker. Yep. We don't we don't have the budget for the it. The budget's a big one. And I think uh, just like what we talked about earlier, that could probably be made yeah, into a whole discussion. Yeah, we could make a whole video about budget. But you have to think about what are you willing to spend. And that might work into our new versus used discussion mm-hmm. as well. So, well, guys, I think we're going to leave it there. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that little discussion. Like I said, that's only some of our opinions, definitely not all of them. And like I said, it's different for everybody. So I'm sure you agreed with a lot of it or disagreed with a lot of it. And if you did, leave it in the comments. Uh, we'll try to do a video like this every once in a while. Uh, and if it gains popularity, then we'll keep doing it. Yeah. But. Prove to people why we're crazy. <laughs> Well, guys, uh, have a good rest of your day, and uh, we'll catch you on the next video. Bye.